the last part of the form and the last part of the sequencing, you have a bond saw into a tan saw, and then you've got the, the punching action at the end. Again, I'm not going through the form. Uh, you can find this on YouTube you're, if you're studying this form on your own. This just gives you a little bit more depth, but you know the, the movements that we're going into. So this could work. This bond saw can work as a um, technique to take the person down, uh, whether it be from uh, unconsciousness due to the nerve or the blood. It depends on what you're doing with this. I could use this in the front part of the throat or the neck to get a blood attack. This time I'm gonna do it on the back of the occipital lobe of the brain so we can show you the nerve attack. And what we're doing with this is we're going to be, could you turn for one second please? Okay, as I've got his, his head down, what I'm gonna do, the nerves that are coming up, you have the lesser occipital nerve, you've got a greater occipital nerve, but they run up the base of the skull. Right at the base of the occipital lobe here, we can access four nerves, okay? And little branches too, but the four main nerves, they're the important ones. As I use my forearm, I'm going to slice across. Now, he's standing, he's not dropped down, so it's very difficult. This would be an impossible technique for me to do. But as you see the sequence move and the fighting applications, then you'll see how it goes. So we're going to do it again three times. I'm going to show you on the, the one side, the other side, and then the third time I'll show you with a little bit more vigor to show you the effects of the attack. Now, if this does not drop him, okay, for some reason, because not everybody's impervious to everything all the time, you have to have a, uh, always a backup. There's the part of the form where we go into this punching. Now, I don't know if I'm going to need it on Rob or not, but we'll see. Okay, if not, I'm going to go into this movement, and I'll explain it after the technique is done. So, as the attack comes in, I've dropped him, I came across, he threw the punch, I pulled him in, he deflected, I pulled him across, I've turned him, dropped him down to get him into the choke, he reaches up, I've separated the arms, I've dropped him, I turn him around this way, I block out the knee, come across. He hasn't gone down on either of these, so what I'm going to do now is I have the base of the skull right in here, and I'm going to come right across. Now, I'm not going to elbow him. I'm going to slice with my forearm. I'm going to slice with the ulnar bone across that occipital. All right, so let's take a look at on, on the other side. Person comes in with a press. He comes across with a punch. Throw this. He parries. I've dropped him in. I've turned him, dropped him. He reaches up from my head. I pull him across. I drop him. I turn him once again. He decides to knee me. I tried to hit him. Didn't work. I tried to push the jaw. Didn't work. And then I'm going to slide. Okay? So let's give that a try. I guess it's going to work okay. You got a little dizzy in this little, application. Little Sorry. So we come across. We come in. Throw the punch. Come across. Hit him. Drop him. He reaches up. I separate, I try to drop, it didn't work, I hit, I turn, I come across, and then... Hey, oh, you're a big one to catch. <laughs> no, I'm good. You okay? That's good. Okay. So, what was the effects of that? Uh, unexpected, so I uh, didn't think it would work that effective. The legs, the legs just want to kick out. The, it, it, it's, it's difficult to describe, but the legs just want to kick out. So I'm still uh, awake. I understand what's going on, but the legs just, they just give up. And as soon as, as, soon as I was on the ground, I, I was okay. Okay. Well, it happens also, if you're working just with the neurological attacks of the human body, when you hit the ground, that shock on the nerve is almost like slapping the back of the neck, as you've seen me revive most of the guys. So when you drop, sometimes the people revive by themselves. Okay, if you drop them harder, sometimes they don't revive by themselves. But this is why a lot of times when people see the knockouts, uh, they say they see it in YouTube or they see it on this video, and they look and they go, oh, the guy had a break fall. Go, oh, yeah, the guy's awake. He's lifting his head up and stuff. It's because the person self-revives when they hit the deck. Now, again, these are just training times. So I'm not trying to hurt them. Okay, we're trying to go as soft as possible with getting the same effects. Now, that's a hard line to cross. You have to keep the person safe, not really hurt the person, not really hit the guy, and at the same time show an effect so you guys appreciate it and understand what's going on with the cue show. So it's a very fine line. So when you hear people arguing, well, he wasn't unconscious on the ground, just go to a seminar or a class or something and find out for yourself whether it's real or not. Okay, it wouldn't be around the world now if it wasn't real, and the old masters wouldn't have been talking about it centuries ago if it wasn't real. So validate this for yourself, but at the same time, in your form, you have some great technique. And all, again, that was, was a slide. Had I taken it with a concussion instead of more of a stretching action, 
he would have gone down much deeper, much faster, maybe not have been so conscious on the ground <laughs> that time. Again, that's just bonsai.